we're going to be looking at in this video is we're going to be looking at the process for preparing sophisticated answers. Now, I should say the title is a little bit misleading because we're actually not going to really be talking about that. Because if you were to ask that question, how do you prepare a sophisticated response for an essay or another piece of writing? The simple answer is, in short, you do not and should not. Now, I'm going to underline these words right now because I just want to reinforce how important this is. And if I basically had an FAQ that anyone asked me of what do I need to do to make it more sophisticated, that is my answer for it all the time. Now, I'll explain what I mean by this answer and explain why I give this answer. And what is actually meant by the term sophistication, because that seems to be the, probably the biggest point of contention, what that word actually means. Okay, so I'm going to rub this off for a second. I'm going to look at that meaning of that word. It should not be your focus, first of all. And we'll start by looking at that. And that you shouldn't be focusing on making your answer sound more sophisticated by whatever that word that means. Okay, so the question you might be asking is, why not sophisticated? Why not make my response sound good? I mean, you can make it sound good. That's all well and good. But it shouldn't be your focus for what you're doing when you're writing. And certainly not for an essay or not for any other kind of response where you're required to give detail, especially detail from a text. Now, the main reason for that is that a response that sounds good isn't necessarily a good response. It means that you have a way of words, which is good. It's a great quality to have. But that doesn't make it a good response. Certainly, having a way of words is not a bad attribute to have. In fact, it's a very good attribute. It means that you're able to discuss things with very good and very correct grammar and syntax. That it means that you're able to express things clearly. And by expressing things clearly, it means that you don't have to make it complicated. So it's one of the things to avoid. Now, it requires skill to be able to use sophistication well. That's what I mentioned. So, and it often fails more students than it helps. So unless you're one of those really, really high achieving students who feels absolutely 100% confident with everything that you're saying and you have a complete understanding and faith with all the language that you use, then, yeah, you can use more advanced vocabulary if that's what you define sophisticated as meaning. By sophisticated, what, what I mean, or by, by basically what I interpret by um, sophistication, is an answer that is complete. I'm going to bit onto that a bit more later. But let me just go through very quickly some of the flaws, some of the drawbacks to sophistication and the way that it's often misused. It's because of expansive but poorly chosen vocabulary. As in, you show your cleverness, but not exactly your um, way of being able to use language well, or basically using the completely wrong term in order to try and sound fancy. In order to say, I've got a language technique, but I haven't chosen the right one. So definitely avoid that one. I mean, your vocabulary should be there just to basically state things as they are and not try and make it sound any better than what it is. Philosophical but irrelevant statements. You're not doing a psych lecture or a philosophical lecture where you're discussing the mind and the beauty of the natural world and and anything else like that. You're discussing a text. So anything irrelevant or anything philosophical is not going to add anything. And even if you're told that it will, you have to look back at the question. You're only going to be marked on what's on the question. You're not going to be marked on anything fancy that you add as an added extra. You don't get extra credit for being a little bit cleverer than the rest of the class. So definitely avoid these. Overuse of language. And this often comes from, again, um, students trying to sound sophisticated is they will overuse language when they don't need to. They will say things in a much more cleverer way than what they would if they were just to state the facts simply. So avoid that. Unclear and confusing statements. Now often, these two are often linked together. When they use language and overuse language, they do it in such a way where they, suddenly what they're writing becomes confusing. And it's not really clear what you're trying to say. And if I had a dollar every time I came across it, I'd be a rather wealthy man. So if I was to use that old cliche, so it's one of those things that I constantly come across from students trying to impress with how good their vocabulary is. And it's something to really avoid. As I said, it's not going to help you very much at all. All right. And finally, excessive commentary. Now, excessive commentary basically means that you're going on and on and on discussing things. 
I'm trying to be sophisticated with the way you're discussing things. Now, obviously, this is actually not such a bad quality and that it's much better to have excessive than too little because it means that you're able to discuss things. It just means that you need, then need to be able to draw it back a bit. Okay, so this is one of those things that's good quality to have, but not a good quality in a response. And finally, a lack of a focus on answering the question. And this is often the big thing which basically sophistication leads to, which is a lack of focus on answering the question, more of a focus on being um, posh and proper and sort of trying to make the answer seem more important than what it is. When they completely forget, well, hang on, I was supposed to answer the question, wasn't I? Oops. Okay, you need to make sure that this, no matter what you do, is always your top priority. And if you need to stay it in simple language, so be it. Your complexity and your, certainly your sophistication is not going to come from any of these things. So you can forget language will not get you sophistication. Nor will... Um, anything to do with basically um, what I call intelligence or anything that's used to sound intelligent. I mean, if you're smart, just prove it through the clarity of your responses. That proves enough that you're smart. You don't need to actually try and sound it as well. Okay, so language and intelligence, those two things, are basically two definite no-nos. Yes, it's a simple structure and a simple format, and it's meant for a simple answer. All right. So the simple philosophy is don't turn something into rocket science, which isn't rocket science. Just make it what it is. Okay. Now, this is the, my better definition. An answer becomes sophisticated by being complete. All right. And it means a number of things. First of all, that every argument is reasoned. I'm going to highlight that word. I'm going to put it in big shiny stars. I'm actually going to draw these stars on there right now. It is reasoned. As in, every point that is raised is backed by evidence. So you basically do this. All right? You have a point. For every point, you explain it or discuss how it actually answers the question. You prove it. That's sophistication, all right? As in, you identify it, you point out why it relates to your question, and you prove it. There's nothing else to do. If you've got a good point, which is backed, which is accurate, which is true, that's all you need to do, all right? So you don't need to go and add extra things like basically intelligent language or so forth, because you can basically do it entirely through that. I'm going to get rid of those stars from it and get on to the final bit here, which is this should be your focus. All right. And that's basically what I'm referring to. So all of these things, basically having solid evidence, having reasons, all these things, means that your focus is more directly related to the question. And that this is entirely a process related to the question. So if I was to look at this, everything I do is going back to that. As I said, it's where your criteria come from. They don't come from anything else. So rather than labor the point, I'm just going to reinforce that make sure that you look at what the cr criteria and the question is asking you to do and nothing else. All right, move on. Okay, so complete responses are basically those which have strong ideas which are proven. Okay, so we've, we just sort of ascertain that then, that basically you've got a strong main idea and you've proven it. There's nothing else to be said. And for each main point, uh, sorry, main point, you're able to do um, two things. That first of all, you provide an answer, and second of all, you prove it. Now, proving it is an interesting one. And again, many people believe it's sophisticated to do this with lots of language techniques and refer to many fancy technical terms. But again, that's not proof. That's providing a lot of different techniques. They need to be related to what your answer is, and that's one of the things about sophistication is it needs to be directed at something. So everything needs to go towards providing an answer which is proven, not necessarily providing um, a statement and then a hope of evidence which means something, but I'm not exactly sure what. Your sophistication basically depends on how well you do this two, these two. All right.
So focus on those two things. Now, this quote, and I like this quote quite a lot, it comes from Leonardo da Vinci, and basically it's simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And basically this is the philosophy here. You provide an answer and prove it by basically establishing a clear main idea, focusing your discussion towards pleading your case, and using evidence that clearly has a link between it and whatever it is you're trying to discuss. And this is basically um, da Vinci's philosophy in essay format essentially and that you're focusing on doing what you need to do and not and basically serving a purpose rather than trying to make it complicated elaborate and prone to failure prone to breaking and this is why sophistication is is often born our simplicity because of the fact that simple things don't break as often they don't fall apart as often they're easy to fix they're easier to make all those things and this is basically the strategy you need to be focusing on Something that is simple to do and simple to read and simple to follow and simple to mark. That's what a marker is looking for. I mean, the one thing particularly about simple language, and, and often I get this impression from students that they think their language and their vocabulary is too simple in order to be able to give a good response, but that doesn't matter. Because there's no criteria, and especially in year 11 and 12, but also for other years, that really looks hard at vocabulary. So you don't need to focus on that, and certainly you don't need to focus on making it more complicated than what it needs to be. So this comes through planning, this comes through just having a very simple train of thought, and it means that your everything that you do is focused on the simple goal of proving and, and clearly stating your answer. And basically everything goes back to the question again. And that's basically about sophistication. So remember, there's no such thing. Make sure you answer the question properly, and focus on giving a simple and intelligent answer through basically intelligent that I know what I'm talking about and basically that I'm able to discuss in a very clear manner in which anyone be able to understand it, then that's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything else. So until next time, I'll see you later.